To service the seals, begin by removing the 8 discharge manifold bolts using a 10mm Allen wrench. Using a rubber mallet, tap the discharge manifold away from the drive end. Please note, the discharge manifold is very heavy so use caution. Be sure to properly support the bottom of the manifold to avoid injury. The V-packing spacers may or may not stay in the discharge manifold during removal. To remove the adapter from the discharge manifold, use two screwdrivers to pry it away from the manifold. Inspect O-ring and backup ring for damage. If the V-packing spacer remained in the inlet manifold, use a reverse pliers and grasp the inside of the adapter, pulling away from the manifold. Inspect O-ring and backup ring for damage. Use a small pick to remove the inlet manifold O-rings. To remove the inlet manifold, start by removing the four inlet manifold bolts using a 12mm Allen wrench. Using a rubber hammer, tap away from drive end to create separation. Then, using two screwdrivers, work from each side between the manifold and crankcase and remove. Sometimes when removing the inlet manifold, the male adapter will fall out. One side is notched, one side is V-shaped. Next, remove the V-packings with a screwdriver. There are two V-packings in each cylinder. Use caution ensuring you do not scratch the sealing surface during removal. Remove the female adapter and inspect for wear on inside. Check that sealing surface is smooth and free of corrosion. Access the low pressure seal, flip the manifold around and remove with a screwdriver, using caution not to scratch the sealing surface. Check the inside of the seal for wear or damage. In some cases, the low pressure seal will remain on the plunger. These can be pulled off the plunger by hand. Seal kits also contain an O-ring located on the end of the plunger. To service the O-ring or plunger, start by removing the seal retainer. There is a wick inside the retainer that can be replaced if needed. To remove the plunger retainer, Use a 14mm hex wrench. Before completely removing the retainer, stop and push the plunger towards the drive end to break loose from the retainer. You can then completely remove the retainer. Inspect the O-ring and backup ring for damage. Remove the plunger and inspect for cracks or abrasion to the surface. Behind the plunger, there is a keyhole washer and barrier slinger. In the case of a water leak, these serve as barriers to keep water from the oil seal in the dry vent. To reassemble, start with the barrier slinger with the cup away from the oil seal, followed by the keyhole washer. Direction is not important. Next, place the plunger retainer on the plunger. It will only fit in one direction.
Before reinstalling the plunger, apply thread sealant to the plunger rod threads. Thread on the plunger and torque to proper specification. Install the plunger retainer with the wick pointing down towards the oil pan. Install the new low pressure seals with the spring side down and press into place. Next, install the female adapter. The adapter has a flat side and groove side. Install with the flat side down. Next, install the V-packing with the groove facing up. Install the second V-packing also with the groove facing up. The male adapter has a flat and V side. Install with the flat side up. Before installing the V-packing spacer, be sure to replace with new O-rings and backup rings included in the seal kit. The V-packing spacer has two distinct steps. The larger side goes down into the discharge manifold. Press into place. To install the manifold, first rotate the crankshaft until the two outside plungers are at even distance from the crankcase. This will provide assistance when installing the inlet manifold. Replace the inlet manifold and press into place. Install the four manifold bolts and torque to proper specification. Reinstall or replace inlet manifold O-rings. Next, install the discharge manifold. Install the eight manifold bolts using the proper sequence shown here. Tighten to proper specification. Thank you.